Okay. Let me ask, but uh, before I get into that, uh, it's a little unusual that you're not aware of a, the procedure to set aside of, or vacate or abate a notice of deficiency or an assessment. Only if it were issued in error. Okay. All right. So, right. so, but you don't have the authority to, if it was shown that it was issued in error, you you personally don't have the authority to vacate or set that aside? Well, if it were issued in error, then we, you know, if it, say there was an identity theft or something like that, but that isn't the case here from all indications I have thus far. Why are you thinking it needs to be vacated? Well, let me ask you, if it, would you would you agree that a lack of evidence and witnesses to verify and prove that he's a taxpayer with taxable income and has an obligation to file, that that would be grounds to abate or set aside. Now, what do you mean by witnesses and and evidence? We have been sent the information by the payer right. that he has received that information. It is a reliable source. It was reliable. sent in. He, he is due. Yes, it, it's a financial institution that sent it to us. Did they, it, 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 well, it, well, let me ask you, would you consider a reliable source uh, or information to be reliable and uh, credible when it was given under threat, duress, and coercion? You know, he owes this tax. Uh -huh. You're going to try to twist it and turn it and say, no, no, he doesn't owe tax. You know, I work in the frivolous return department, and we are plenty aware of all your your jargon and your garbage and everything else. Oh, garbage! And, That's not a good way to start, Ms. Adams. I didn't I didn't get into any of that. I'm asking you said you know I'm asking you about a reliable source. I asked you a simple question, then you started going off on a rant about garbage. Um, I can I can uh, assure you that if you're not aware of, the, of about witnesses and evidence that the that I've had a number of agents admit to me they don't even know what the word frivolous means when the court uses it. Now, let me ask you before we even get into this. Do you know what the court means by frivolous when they use that? Yes. There, it, what does it mean? The frivolous, the, the frivolous terminology, as we know it here working in this, is you are presenting an argument that has no merit. Okay. You understand that's not what frivolous means. Frivolous means so lacking in merit as to warrant no demonstration or illustration. Now, if I, if our position is that there are no witnesses of personal first-hand knowledge to show that my client is a taxpayer, the mere fact that you have to identify this alleged witness shows that it's not frivolous. Uh, it may lack, and, and you have to understand that not everything that lacks merit is frivolous. They're two different things. Something that may lack may, may lack merit, but not be frivolous. Something may lack merit and and be so lacking in merit it doesn't even have to be demonstrated. I've done nothing of the sort. I'm asking you about a reliable source. If you consider some information given on the threat, duress, and coercion to be a reliable source, that's not just answer the question, and we can move on and get closer to a resolution. But labeling it garbage. Is uh, is wildly premature at best. So why don't we exercise some good faith and instead of labeling things garbage and frivolous, just answer the question. Sir, I am not going to go into all the arguments. I'm not going to argue with this. I know the tax law. I know that oh. your client is subject to pay. He's subject oh. to tax. That's why he was issued the statutory notice of deficiency. If he chooses not to fight it if he wants to take it to court he can file a petition with the court and take it to court and and present your evidence that you think it's not taxable that you will have to go through the united states tax court in order to do that but at well, this point there let me, is nothing let me I ask can you. do, do. Well, i'm not ask. vacating it i am okay. not right. withdrawing not, it okay that's fine but as far as as you're you're stating that you know he owes this tax and that, about the applicable law, are you an expert in the interpretation and application of the Constitution and laws? I am file. I am following my directives, my IRMs, my LEMS, and my instructions per my job. I have been doing my job for almost thirty years. Okay. Well, so are you an expert in the interpretation and application of the Constitution and federal law? Is anybody? Uh, you're the one who's insisting right now that, that my client owes this tax. So 
you're, you're pretty insistent. You think that any challenge is frivolous. So since you're the one making the accusation. If, 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 if you've got reliable evidence saying he is not taxable, I suggest you take it to tax court. Are you an expert in the interpretation and application of the Constitution and federal law? My, interp- my, my answer to that, sir, is if you are sure he is not liable for tax, you need to file a petition with the tax court with, uh, because of that, with the statutory notice of deficiency there. Mm-hmm. You have 90 days in which to do so, and then you can argue it in tax court. Well, And on that note, we're going to agree to disagree. I am not going to... I am not going to answer any more questions at this point because we have to agree to disagree at this point. Well, maybe we can agree with your supervisor. Can we have a supervisor call back? How about that? Um, My my supervisor is not going to call you back and argue with you either. I'm not asking. I asked you a question. An argument is is a collected series of statements leading to a definite proposition. It's an intellectual process. All you've done is contradict and refuse to answer questions. Your your statutory notice of deficiency tells you there that if Uh you feel that it was issued in error and that your your client is not taxable, you can petition the tax court to resolve the issue. So... On that note, that is my recommendation to you. So your next action would be to file a petition with the tax court and take it there. Okay. Can I because have a supervisor we, call we, back we anyway? We cannot. How about a supervisor call back anyway? Uh, will your client be there? Of course. Uh, there's n- there's no supervisor in this week. Oh. oh so oh, it would okay. it wouldn't be for a good ten days. Do you have a fax number? You can fax it to 801. Oh, hold on. 801. Okay. Will this get to you or your department? It will get to my department. And do you think it's kind of odd that you want to make a legal determination against my client, and um, when I ask you about your qualifications to do so, you refuse? Sir, I, I, no, have, to, well, I no. have to compete for my job. My qualifications, I work under the authority of Ms. Green, who is my department manager. We have very strict guidelines that we follow. I'm glad to hear that. Very strict guidelines. Well, do your guidelines include exercising good faith and answering questions responsibly? I have tried to do that. You have not tried to uh, okay. do that. Okay. You, you have. Well, and I, I, my client is not line as a witness. I asked you a very simple question about... The, the reliability of information you rely on, and you start ranting about frivolous and garbage. I, I that, that, you know, that, that is. Uh, you know, I answer calls from people that try to get out of paying their taxes every day, and I'll be honest, it gets a little annoying because I do pay taxes. I live up to the constitutional rights. We are in a country that affords us very, very wonderful benefits because we all work on the system of paying the taxes we are we owe. And the taxes paid by the citizens of this United States give us benefits in this country that we do not have elsewhere. I don't resent the fact that we have to pay taxes. Do I resent having to pay it at times when I have to write the check out? Everybody does. But we have to pay them and in the end we benefit from doing that. I am here to enforce tax Tax, the tax on those that are not paying their taxes. Okay, but you realize all and that you, all that you gave all that rhetoric you just went through is not a is not a basis of, of truth. It's not a standard of objective truth or, or or investigation. That is your opinion, and I'm talking about facts and witnesses and evidence. And so, if you believe that my client and or the, and that you're properly applying the law to my client, then just answer whether you are an expert in the interpretation we are and application. Property, of the we code. are. But, but just answer the question. We, are we you an are expert? We are properly you, applying it. But we you, you are believe properly that. applying it. I am following. The, I did not issue his stat notice, but I know by looking at the information I have in front of me, it was issued legally. And you believe no that there one are witnesses? Is an expert. You're, you're beli- no one is an expert. Let me write that down. No one's an expert. No one. You would think that when you're taking on, on every out, single thing, nobody is an expert on every issue. I didn't ask you that. We I all have you, our expertise. I asked you if you were an expert in the interpretation and application of the Constitution and federal law. 